gout is the topic for this video and I have some clinical vignettes uh, to show as well. Uh, gout is a very high yield topic. It's basically the accumulation of these uh, uric acid crystals into the tissues and um, and the most common place or body location is the great toe. That's very commonly uh, shown on clinical vignettes. And this can be either acute or chronic. It can happen um, on an ongoing basis in patients as well. I will go into detail uh, about all of this. So why does this happen? What is the reason? Well, there's three basic reasons. The first uh, is uh, the person's uh, uric acid level in their body uh, is normal, but they are not able to secrete it by the kidney. So these are known as under secretors, people who are under secretors, and this is the number one cause. And I think 90%, I think, of gout cases are under secretors. Another cause is overproducers, people who produce too much uh, uric acid. And then um, th those are the two main categories. The third um, actual reason that is exogenous, meaning something you do uh, rather than something the body does, is that is your diet. A diet can cause gout, and in particular, organ meats. Now, what do we mean by organ meats? Uh, meats that basically um, come from an animal's uh, organs. So, for example, some people, they eat liver or they eat kidney or this type of meat is very high in purine and a purine rich diet uh, can lead to gout or cause gout. Another uh, cause is alcohol and uh, it's important to mention that and that's why uh, some patients can uh, get gout attacks as well. So let's get into the symptoms. Well uh, basically the symptoms are very simple to explain you know you've got a, the great toe is infected uh, there's a name for it if the great toe is infected, most commonly it's called podagra. And you'll have swelling, you'll have um, redness, you'll have warmth. Very painful. This, uh, like I said before, it can happen acutely or it can be an ongoing chronic issue. In diagnosis, most of the time, uh, di uh, gout is just diagnosed by observation. Um, because most physicians can just look at it and say well you have gout or you this is the sixth time you've had gout uh, most patients because it's chronic but there are two tests that you do that you can do not always done of course uric acid level serum uric acid level and then a really cool test that they test on uh, uh, licensing exams is that what you do is you aspirate the synovial fluid from the joint and then you look at it under a microscope the crystals will be needle shaped and they will be negatively bifringent. That's a terminology used to describe how something appears under the microscope. And we are of course uh, talking about the uric acid, uric acid crystals. And then finally the treatment. Um, there's treatment for acute and then there's more uh, long-term uh, management. The treatment for acute is most commonly colchicine you give 1.2 milligrams uh, immediately and then 0 0.6 milligrams one hour later and I've written this prescription many times long term for under secretors there's one treatment and then for over producers there's another treatment for under secretors it's probenicid probenicid and for over producers it's allopurinol so th those are the the main medications involved in the treatment of gout. So let's go and look at some clinical vignettes. 69 year old man uh, presents with complaints of excruciating right foot pain. Pain began six hours ago. Uh, one night earlier he had gone out for a steak dinner and drank half a bottle of wine to celebrate his recent retirement. Past medical history significant for blood pressure, takes hydrochlorothiazide, uh, physical exam, he's a fair brow, but it appears acutely uncomfortable. Swelling, tenderness, right in the right ankle, and first toe. Lab tests reveal a white blood cell count of 12,000, hematocrit 39. Serum electrolytes and liver function tests are normal. Uric acid is also normal. Which of the following is most likely seen on examination of the joint arthrocentesis? Well, he's definitely got the diet. He's had some meat. 
and he's got some alcohol in there so those are risk factors for developing joint even tells you first right toe so I mean that's a classic location interesting uric acid levels normal which can be 30 percent of cases a uric acid level will be normal now what they're asking you is that you aspirate the synovial fluid from this joint what will it look like under a light microscope and that terminology is negatively bifringent so that gets rid of these two and they are needle shaped crystals so that would be B uh, next question 83 year old man with history of obesity diabetes high blood pressure chronic renal failure hyperlipidemia and coronary artery disease comes to your office after being awakened from sleep by severe pain in his right first toe. He says that he had sudden onset of acute pain in the toe rapidly following erythema, swelling, tenderness, and warmth. So you've got erythema is redness, swelling, uh, pain, and then it's warm to touch. Physical exam is normal except for swelling and severe tenderness over the metatarsophalangeal joint on the right foot. At this time, the most accurate statement uh, is well, let's, look, let's go through these one by one. Allopurinol would be reasonable therapy now by decreasing his uro, serum uric acid levels. Um, this case is a, a, a case of acute gout, and acute gout is not treated with allopurinol. A chronic gout um, is managed more with allopurinol, so that's not the case. Decreasing his dietary protein may have a role in decreasing frequency of recurrent attacks. Well, that's good. I like that. Most patients will only experience a single attack in their lifetime. And that's not true. Um, most patients actually um, will have recurrences of gout in their lifetime, so it's not C. Overproduction of uric acid is the etiology of these attacks in most patients. Actually, that's not true because the most common etiology is under secretors. So by process of elimination, it would be B. And one more, one final one. 44-year-old businessman presents the physician because of markedly inflamed and painful great toe, on the right great toe. States that he just returned home from a convention and noticed increased pain in the right foot during his plane trip home. Physical exam is remarkable for swelling and erythema of the right great toe, as well as small nodules on the patient's external ear. Aspiration of the metatarsal phalangeal joint of the affected toe demonstrates needle-shaped negatively bifringent crystals, which of the following agents would provide the most immediate relief for this patient. Well, they've all spelled it out. Uh, they spelled it all out for you. And uh, this is acute gout. And in acute gout, you would treat it with colchicine. So that would be choice C.